Welcome to the Expansive CEO Podcast. I'm your host, Hannah Chapman, founder of Expansive CEO and X Squared Wealth Planning. Buckle in as we explore how to create true prosperity and build a business and a life that expands beyond yourself and makes a dent in the universe. Welcome, everyone, to this episode of the Expansive CEO Podcast. I am your host, Hannah Chapman, and today I am talking with a fellow financial industry awesome colleague um, who is a bookkeeper. So we have such an awesome synergy and viewpoint into um, really business finances together. So I'm super excited uh, for this conversation with Michelle Cooper, who is the CEO of Alchemy Accounting and bookkeeping. And she's also a business mentor and author. She has her own podcast too, that we will link. Um, so you can go listen to her. She's an international speaker and, you know, in the bookkeeping accounting space, she really helps you tidy up your money and the relationship. This is the important part, the relationship you have around it so that you can run your business and your life with confidence, clarity, and ultimately ending the suffering around your finances. So Michelle, thank you so much for being here today. I'm so excited to talk to you. I am excited for this conversation. Um, I just love what you do and you're like gold to me. So let's get at it. Yes, let's <laughs> do it. So like I said it before, you know, being you being in bookkeeping and accounting, um, it's, it's really the, um, it's like we're sister um, you know, spaces, right. Being in the financial right. advisor seat, um, kind of like, um, one of the terms that we throw around is like being like the financial quarterback of, you know, someone's like, what's going on in your personal life. I also, you know, deal with what's going on in your business. How are you creating, you know, profit? How are you being in your business to be able to pay yourself appropriately? Right. So you can fund all your personal goals. Um, that's the CFP side of things. And then, you know, but I don't do, I don't do bookkeeping. I don't do accounting. I don't do people's taxes. Um, I help them interpret a lot of those things and plan for those things. Uh, but then you are on that side of helping mm -hmm. people understand deeply understand all of their numbers and, you know, prepare for taxes and do all of those, those other, um, again, critical pieces of the financial puzzle. And for both of us, I think this underlying um, aspect of helping people feel more certain about their finances in this world where there is so much uncertainty or can feel like there's so much uncertainty, that's the thing that really um, stands out. So one of one of the things that I hear a lot from people, and I'm curious to hear if you hear the same, is that, you know, people feel like they feel a sense of peace with me, like the financial right. peace, right? Oh, it's going to be okay. When I'm with you, I feel like it's going to be okay. I understand what I'm, what's happening. I feel a sense of peace. And how, did, how does that translate for you with your clients? Do you notice the same thing? Yeah, for sure. Like, you know, bookkeeping and accounting at the very foundation, it's a compliance-based service, right? Like we are providing accurate detailed financial records that are then turned into tax returns because, you know, taxes is one of those things that, you know, it's not going to go away, right? Um, and we all have to participate in that process. And um, what I realized is that there's that piece for sure. And that's a really critical piece. However, there's the equally important and often overlooked piece is their relationship with money, mm -hmm. right? And, and their relationship with the financial part of their life and their business. And they're very um, intricately weaved together, right? And so if you don't have if, if you aren't taking care of the compliance piece, you're absolutely not going to feel empowered about this part of your business, nor this part of your life, right? You're going to be in that kind of fear, that anxiety, that overwhelm energy, right? Now, you can still have that compliance piece taken care of and still feel anxiety, sure. There might be something else going on there, right? So um, for me, it's 
it's kind of twofold, right? It's, yeah, for sure, we've got to, you know, get the financial records taken care of and, and, and um, be looking at a, a team of professionals that are going to help you achieve your goals, you know, financial planner being one of them, right? Uh, but also uh, what's going on kind of underneath that could be causing some misalignment or dissonant energy, um, which isn't helping you achieve your ultimate goal, right? Um, and often people's ultimate goal is peace of mind, mm. right? I just want to feel okay about this part. Um, I think the feedback that we get from clients is that they do feel confident. They feel content. They feel that things are taken care of. Um, often when people work with me in an advisory piece, they say that, um, it sounds like my goals sound so easy when I, you reflect them back to me. Right. Um, I just think that's one of my just, you know, human design gifts that I see, uh, the possibility, um, very easily. And I see the path, uh, for them that it's like, kind of like you you can't see the outside of the jar from inside of the jar or I can't remember what that saying is but you know sometimes you're too close to see the fastest route through something so yeah oh and if you haven't if the audience hasn't picked up already why we jam <laughs> so well right like the vibe is so good um is because yeah we just have such a similar ethic around, you know, how important, not just the numbers, the numbers are important. Having good data is important, right? Having um, a yeah. good understanding of your numbers is absolutely fundamental to understanding and feeling confident and feeling peaceful about your finances. But the emotional side of how you feel about your money is the more impactful side. It's like, that's, that's where all of our decision-making comes from. Our decision-making doesn't, sure. doesn't actually come from like the data. It mm -hmm. comes from how you feel about the data. And so that, that aspect of like, we have to address the emotions. We have to address um, how you feel about your money. That's how we transform. Um, and then of course you just mentioned human design like three times um, because <laughs> that's, a big aspect of how are you showing up, right? Are you mm -hmm. showing up as yourself? Are you showing up authentically? Do you know how to do that, right? And that's human design helps us really see ourselves for all of our gifts, right? So we can lean, uh, that's how I feel anyway. Yeah. Like, I feel like it, like, it's this permission slip to be who you are. Oh, that's such a good way of looking at it I totally agree like I use two tools in working with clients which is human design and sacred money archetypes and the combination of the two for me really helps me um see their gift right and I think it helps them see their gift right so I'm able to you know for example if somebody's a generator and the, in human design and they're a I don't know like a connector in sacred money archetypes I know that their fastest path to money is going out there and building relationships with people, mm -hmm. right? So using that generator energy and, and responding to, like, you got to put yourself out there, but responding to what comes to you rather than like seeking these things out, right? And the whole thing around, you know, if you're a connector, like, your fastest route to cash is through relationship building. So mm -hmm. investing in, I don't know, Facebook ads isn't going to work. Right. Or funnels, like spending yeah. thousands of dollars on funnels that you work. don't have, you don't have to like, oh, you don't ever have to do another sales call. Like, wait a second. That's actually completely counter to your design. Totally. Totally. So I love that. Oh my gosh. Yes. That is, um, so yes, so similar to, you know, when you're, when you're saying that, like, are you a generator or are you a projector? Right. Like right? All, all of that, you know, like you're going to show up very differently, um, even in the same business. Um, you know, I have 
it's so interesting. I have in one of the groups uh, that I run, we have two women who are both in the bookkeeping and accounting space. Uh, they're so wonderful. And one is a manifester, an emotional manifester. And the other is a sacral generator. And so it's so, it's so fun to see how they, like they, they have very similar business structures and they're, they're different, right? They're, they show yeah. up so differently um, to their spaces and they're meant to, they're not meant to do things the same way um, or, you know, attract clients the same way or say the exact same thing. You couldn't give them each, like, here's a bookkeeper script to get new clients. Like, right. Totally. And, and like, I'm always saying that to clients, like you can't just adopt somebody else's methodology or their copy or their whatever, because it might not resonate with your human design or your sacred money archetype, right? Like right. it has to be true to you. And, you know, the way I have built my business um, is uh, like, you know, it, it's taken me a few years, let's say, uh, to really um, lean into my human design and really understand myself and trust that. Yeah. Right? And what's what's your main um uh, design i'm a generator i'm six two okay and sacral or emotional authority uh sacral sacral authority okay i'm a six two manifesting generator with sacral authority <laughs> okay yay yeah, so we also so. right we have we have that um that in common as well um so yeah i would say tell me uh or do you have an example rather because i have i have quite a few examples of how this has um shaped up for me over the last several years but what's one can you give me one example for you of how like leaning into an aspect of your design has really shifted business for sure so um you know the 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 idea for me in my human design of responding right um I, in the beginning of my business, um, I realized that I was doing that, but I wasn't conscious of it, right? So instead of being out there hustling my ass, seeking, you know, work and clients and that kind of thing, um, responding to opportunities that were presented to myself, to me, um, uh, and trusting my, that sacral decision-making process, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what does this actually feel like in my body? As an accountant, my brain will kick in in the logic and reason yep. piece. And I, I often have to overrule that, right? Because something might look really good on paper, right? I've had clients who are potential clients that look really good on paper. And there's something that's telling me this is not a good fit. Yep. And I can't put my finger on it. And I found that... Um, you know, my logical brain will be like, oh, this is a great client. It's a lot of work. It's a big contract. Like we should do this and figure it out and make it work. But there's this nagging thing that's telling me this is not in alignment with what I stand for, or what my business stands for, right? It's not in line with our core values. I've had situations in the past where I've moved forward with that and it has been a disaster. Yep. like a complete disaster not because anybody's right or wrong or we are just not a good fit yeah right and um and it's it's almost traumatic <laughs> for everybody involved the client my team me like it's just it's it's awful right yeah. um versus even the, you know, the opposite of feeling like I don't know, like on paper, this business maybe doesn't totally align with our core, you know, ideal client, right? Maybe they're a little bit smaller or maybe they're too big. We had a client recently that is a um, $20 million multinational call center. And I was like, okay. oh, that's a lot. Yeah, right? You don't like, have an, an internal accounting department? <laughs> yeah, they don't. Great. And I'm like, what? Like, this seems crazy to me. And they were looking for a accounting department and fractional controller. And 
um, I think I got a little intimidated by it and was like, oh, no, this, this is too big for us. Um, even though I knew that we had the right people. So I had to really kind of go into my own internal process and actually see that uh, and spend some time with the business owner to see that actually we are very aligned, right? And um, he came from a community uh, that I am very active and involved in and um, it has very similar core values, um, very uh, spiritually aligned even. And so I said, okay, well, we'll move forward with this, but we're just going to have to see how it goes, right? And it's actually been a, an incredible process, right? Um, so it can be, to me, it can be, uh, uh, when you start to become aware of your human design, it might not always seem to make sense. It um, makes sense up here in the head. Logically. <laughs> yeah, totally. Especially if you have that strong kind of logical, um, you know, kind of masculine brain that mm -hmm. can kick in. I do. Yeah. Um, and so I have to override that sometimes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That I would say um, the exact same lessons were the most impactful ones from a business standpoint of sinking into and trusting the like life will bring me things to respond to mm -hmm. right when i respond to things i am so much more powerful so much more aligned and that sacral response can be really um like it's it's so clear right it, it's it, there's no mistaking my sacral yes or no and what I had done for so many decades before was to override it with my mind, right? Or let other people say, well, did you think about this? Did you think about that? Why are you doing it this way? That doesn't make sense to me. Make it, you know, tell me why, you know, so then I have to justify myself. And then in the process of justifying myself for, a you know, a decision that came from, you know, my sacral decision-making, then I would get nervous or scared or back away from it. And in the last three and a half years, like really learning and applying my, my design, I can, every time, every time I follow my response and my true sacral yes or no, it's like the ease with which things flow. I have never experienced, um, especially over the last, um, like a, more than a year at this point, this is October, 2024. Um, when we're recording this and about the last year and a half, I have like really honed in on allowing myself to respond to things, not doing so much. Yeah. Like, like you're saying the forcing, anything that I'm forcing, it's not going to work. It's not going to totally. work out the, the way that I want it to. Yeah, totally. Like for me, um, building relationships with people. Um, and then responding to opportunities that come from those relationships is gold. Yeah. Right. Um, I, it doesn't feel good to me to, I'm not one of those like salesy kind of people. So it doesn't feel good to me to be like promoting myself and like putting myself out there in that way. Um, that feels like chasing energy to me in my body. Right. And so I know that that's not right. Right. If I'm in a, a room with people and I'm getting to know them, I'm telling them about my business. If they need my help, absolutely. Right. That feels really easy. And that's that's mostly how my business has been so successful because I've allowed that to happen, mm -hmm. um, which shifts your energy. Right. It shifts it to like what you said, that that calm, peaceful, content, confident energy, right? Which we're all looking for, I think, right? Oh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, and so this kind of like dovetails perfectly into the topic that I think was really present for today. And again, so it's October, we're recording this on October 18th, um, which for the US are 
presidential election election with presidential um election attached to it this time is in the beginning of November. And um for Canada where you are, Michelle, is it uh, is it similar? Do you have a similar election cycle right now? Yeah, so we have um we have an election actually is on Saturday. Uh, this oh, okay. Saturday. Um, okay. And and yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of uncertainty, right, that comes in an election year. Um, I don't know. I don't think it matters where you live in the world. Yeah. Uh, there is just uncertainty that comes. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that uncertainty um, that can be pervasive. Um, you know, I've been talking about this. Anyone who's listened to most of the podcast for this year, we've been talking about the uncertainty um, a lot throughout this entire year because it does tend to ramp up, especially in the summer and leading in. And so one of the things we were talking about before we started recording is that um, businesses tend to pause, even consumers. Consumers will pause and wait until we have more clarity, right? Businesses, markets, consumers, everyone wants to know what's going to happen and then they'll make a decision, right? So from your perspective, what was super interesting to hear, um, because you have a large base of clients, you know, lots of different business um, businesses and business owners that you work with, seeing like the trend of revenue being down across the board. And, sure. from, and from my book of business as well, you know, I mostly work with business owners. Um, I would say the majority of them have been experiencing that same thing of revenue being down for the year, people, you know, this sounds really good, but I'm just like, I just need to wait. I just need to pause on that um, and just wait until there's more certainty. And that's, you know, that can, it it can just take a little bit of time for that uncertainty to unfold um, or to become clear. And so one of the things um, that you had shared, you know, was like how, and I, see this too, how much that, how much of a toll that can then take on the business owner and how important it is to have a support system for your financial life. Like when things are tough, that's actually when you need the support the most. Oh, totally. Right? Yeah. So totally. Can you, can you talk a little bit more about that and tell that story a little bit? Yeah, for sure. Like, so we have hundreds of clients across North America, so Canada and the United States. So we have a really broad spectrum, mostly uh, service businesses, right? Um, so so ser selling services is very different than selling products, right? Um, products people can buy or, you know, they might be smaller purchases or something um, that they can kind of try on and get that instant gratification or try out. Um, or even larger product purchases like a car that they could go test drive, right? Uh, purchasing a service is different. There's this leap of faith that people need to take in purchasing a service, right? And, you know, it's our job as a service provider to help them navigate that leap of faith, right? And build that trust. Um, in working with clients um, across the board, I see a drop in revenue. I would say, I don't want to say 100% because I don't know that I've looked at everybody, but it's the percentage is really high, right? Yeah. I find that people are um, right now, like you said, they're a little bit more discerning about spending money. They're, they're not as impulsive um, in buying stuff, most people. Um, you know, there is, sure, there's uncertainty around who's going to be president or in Canada, you know, which party is going to lead. Um, but the fact is, is business is going to go on, right? Yep. It, it, life is going to continue. It doesn't matter uh, who gets elected. Business is going to go on. Sure, there might be some things that might affect your business. Absolutely. But um, all in all, business is going to continue. The The uncertainty that happens and, and what we see in this drop of revenue in people's businesses um, translates into what I see as anxiety and uh, fear, right? This uncertainty 
of like, is this, is the economy going to pick up? Is, are things going to pick up? Do I need to lay people off? Like there's real world things to think about, right? Um, can I make it through this time? Right. Um, I also think there's this kind of like, almost like whiplash effect from the pandemic, right? Where, you know, that whole situation and the economic repercussions of all of that, it, we're seeing the reality of that now. Business owners are seeing the reality of um, the workforce and the changes in the workforce and their attitude. Um, and so there's a lot of components that as a business owner, I think leaves you with a lot of uncertainty. And that directly affects your relationships with your family, your friends, your team, right? Um, it affects your, your level of confidence, your level of patience, your level of compassion. People talk about having compassion fatigue, decision-making fatigue, right? All of this kind of lowers that energetic vibration and can put us in this survival state, right? Basically. Now, when we're in that state of being, that survival state, we're in a fight, flight, freeze, typically response, right? Sometimes a fawn, which is kind of like a do nothing, people pleasing kind of thing. But um, we're in that energy. And, you know, physiologically, we're usually experiencing some kind of anxiety, a, a dysregulation of our nervous system. And an inability to access our creative thinking and our critical thinking part of our brain, right? So we can't come up with creative solutions anymore. We can't come up with, um, we're disconnected from our intuition. We're disconnected from the part of our brain that actually fuels us and helps us regulate our nervous system, right? And puts things into perspective, right? So to me, um, what I see in my business with my clients is they become really panicky. Mm -hmm. And it's like this reaction of like slashing costs, right? Letting people go, like taking drastic action, which yeah. is that black or white view. It's like putting on the black or white glasses, right? Like, oh, I've got to slash expenses, right? right. Lay everybody off. I'm going to do everything myself kind of thing, right? Um, and that's not the answer to be honest, right? It, the answer isn't the contraction. Contraction and expansion, as you know, because you work with this, is natural in our universe, right? So for sure, there might be a contraction that's happening. It's causing us to look at things maybe a little bit differently, but I would encourage people not to go into the drastic actions that we sometimes think we need to take, right? Like that nervous system regulation, that calming energy, um, needs to be present. So what, what you would see is like, like that kind of black or white scenario, those drastic actions, arguing with friends, family, impatience, um, even, uh, you know, family, uh, if you've got a partner, spouse, whatever, um, there lots of arguments, lots of tension there. And that, to me, that's the heartbreaking part about entrepreneurship, right? Is that I see families break down. My family broke down because of that. But well, it was one contributing factor, right? Um, my marriage broke down. Uh, it, that was a contributing factor to my marriage breaking down. Um, and there's, there, you know, there's lots of stuff around it. But that's the heartbreak of entrepreneurship, I think, is that the stress that entrepreneurs carry, that founders and CEOs carry, is so significant that it bleeds out into their life. And they lose relationships with their kids, yeah. their significant others, their friends, and even good relationships within their team. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that you just um, laid out some of those, like, what are the symptoms? right? Like what might you actually be doing? What are the things that you might be doing and experiencing that are then pointing to that when, when those things are presenting and, you know, you or I are looking and seeing those behaviors happening, um, that's where, that's where that 
like you said, that calming presence, that peaceful presence, that the, the outside tool is, is almost how I feel sometimes. Like I am a tool in the toolbox for that Mm -hmm. business owner, right? If they're feeling those, those feelings of dysregulation, of confusion, of like panicky about like, I don't know what's going to happen next. Like that is a moment to reach out, right? To, to reach out and use the tools that you have prepared for yourself. One of them being your financial team. Totally. Right. Like that's, you know, you pay, you pay me. (laughs) Totally. Yeah. You know, it, uh, yesterday I had a call with a client, he's in Florida and one of his homes was completely destroyed in the hurricane. And he, you know, we, he reached out by text and said, I need to hop on a call with you. Um, you know, we're talking yesterday and he's like, I just, I don't, I don't know what to do right now. Like this home is like, it's filled with sand. Like it's, it's a rental property. Like there's a stream of income there. Um, and his gut reaction in that, and of course you would have a fight or flight response if you're in a hurricane, right? Yeah. But his, his response, like his gut reaction was like, let's, let's, la- let's look at where we can cut costs, right? And he's like talking about, like, this is a multi-million dollar business kind of scenario, right? Like lots of different pieces, right? Um, including investments. And he's talking about turning off Audible. What's that, $14.99? Like, I'm like, that's not, it's not where we need to go right now. Sure, maybe you'll need Audible right now. And yeah, that's fine. But that's not the energy we want to be making decisions from. Right. Right. And I totally get that your situation, you're standing in the middle of a destroyed home and you're worried about your future. Right. But we can, we can go into that panic. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's totally understandable. It's not right or wrong. Right. It's just understandable. Um, But that he did the right thing. And that's what I assured him. You did the right thing by reaching out. Yes. Right. And getting people on your side to help you figure this out. Like you're not alone. Right. And that's why I think having building that financial team that, you know, great accountant, bookkeeper, financial advisor, lawyer, like these people are really important in helping you navigate the unknown. Yeah. Right. And they're going to bring their lens. Right. Like I had a meeting this morning with a client and it's great. There's a financial planner, there's me and there's a lawyer. And then there's somebody who's like doing the succession planning. We all bring a different lens to the table. Yeah. Right. And that client needs every single one of those lenses. Right. And we're all there to support them in figuring out the succession of the business. Right. So we can weigh in with our input, but then also work collaboratively, collaboratively. And and that to me is an ideal scenario. Not everybody has that. Um, and right. it doesn't that doesn't have to cost a lot of money either. Like just saying, people think these things are really expensive. They're not, right? Considering the benefit that you get out of them. Right. Exactly. Exactly. The the one of the most amazing things I think about having good accounting, good financial planner, good CPA doing your taxes, like they will very often more like pay for themselves Absolutely. more than you can actually count. Especially yeah. if you um, work with someone over years, if you have a good relationship, um, like the money you can save in doing your taxes properly alone can be more than more than you could ever pay your whole financial team. Um, it's, it's amazing. And along with that, you know, what I'm, what I'm hearing, um, you say and, and corroborate, which is, you know, has been my experience as well is how important it is to have like a full team, like everyone that you need. Right. Cause it's, um, you know, I've met people that just had a CPA 
all through, you know, so their, their accountant does their taxes, but they don't, they don't have a bookkeeper helping them keep all the receipts in order for the whole year. So mm -hmm. it's a whole mess at the end of the year when they're trying to get everything to the CPA, they don't have a financial advisor either. Right. Like they're like, well, the, you know, my tax person will just tell me what I need to do. Right. Like, no, that's not, that's not their wheelhouse. Yeah, for sure. Right. For sure. I see people like that all the time. Right. Where they're like, oh, um, you know, like you said, like they have a CPA, but they have no bookkeeper. They have no financial advisor. That's usually a common scenario. Or they might have a bookkeeper and they think that bookkeeper can do their taxes. And I'm like, right. absolutely not. Right. The amount of times people say to me, well, where should I? I've got this 100K. Where should I put it? I'm like, I am not a financial advisor. I can't tell like, you that. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, it's actually against the law for me to tell you that. But like, that's a question for a financial advisor. Right. Yeah. Like that's their job. And you, I'm very, very, very much a proponent of building a team, a collaborative team um, that, that syncs with you, right? So often that means um, interviewing people, right? Right. Like when I met you and I was like, oh my God, like you come at this from, with the perspective of human design, you're my person because my people, my clients slant to that way right they, they lean that way they might not totally be in some of them might be a little like oh michelle's a little woo or whatever but they're they're open to it because they're in my world some of them are right. all in i can easily like they would jump all over you kind of thing because that's a a unique thing similar to me not a lot of accountants work with human design or money archetypes right, right. exactly so um when you find people like i hang on to them because uh, it's so important. There's so many aspects to people feeling safe and secure around their finances. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that, that's the, um, gosh, you told a story before we started recording, um, of someone that, you know, having taken their life because, because of the, the financial strain and stress yeah, over, yeah. you know, several years. And so that's, it's, uh, it's like, it hits you like, oh, like right in the heart. For sure. You know, um, it's, it's what I call like the dark side of entrepreneurship, right. Is the stress that business owners walk around with. It's they carry it like a, like a lead backpack on their back and you know I've had one uh client and friend uh take their own life I've had one uh client and friend who actually was thinking of that and actually didn't tell me that they said to me either you help me or I declare bankruptcy bankruptcy being their kind of like front for I'm gonna end my own life Mm -hmm. um, we were lucky enough to step in and turn that business around in two years. And he ended up exiting with a sale. Mm -hmm. um, but, and that's when he said, well, you know, I was at that place where I was ready to go because I just felt I couldn't provide for my family. Mm -hmm. um, but on the other side of that is I've had two uh, clients and friends who um naturally passed away uh which you know there could be a variety of reasons for that but in my opinion knowing from the inside of their business how much stress they were under for sure that was a contributing factor yeah and I don't want to see that right like that's the extreme side of things you know, within that is all kinds of things that happen. Like I said, marriages break down, families break apart, relationships and um, people burn out, right? They they have significant health problems. I, I got to that place where I had a, a really significant health challenge that was absolutely related to stress in my business yeah and specifically around finances mm -hmm. right and it just um it was how I dealt with that stress that was very unhealthy and I had to unwind that for myself and thankfully 
I have a lot of resources and also a lot of training so that I had people who could help me see it and walk me through it. And then I could support myself on it as well, right? Lots of people don't have that. They're just in the grind of business and they think this is just how it is. Yeah. I don't think that's how it has to be. I sure hope it's not. Yeah, I, yeah, I totally agree. It, it is what people, a lot of people experience. And so it gets normalized in some ways, right? Mm -hmm. And not in some ways, in a lot of ways, it gets normal. Yeah. And, and people can wear that as a badge of honor. I did. Yeah. Right. Like, look at me. I'm working so hard. I'm hustling and grinding and I'm doing all the things and I work 20 hour days or whatever. Right. And it's like, I wore that as this badge of honor. Yeah. And I had to really look at why are you doing that? Like, what kind of badge of honor is that? You have no relationship with your kids. You have your marriage has broken down. You're now divorced. You're overweight. You're unhealthy. Like, that's not a badge of honor. Yeah. Right. We have to get real about that and actually, you know, um, decide what you want. But then, of course, build a team around you. Like, I was completely ignoring my finances and I was like the cobbler with no shoes yeah. kind of thing, right? Like, I don't have time to deal with that. I'm generating revenue. And that was my whole focus was generating revenue in a way that wasn't in line with my human design or my money archetype, right? And that's why it, be, that's why it was so hard. Yeah. Right? Yes, exactly. Exactly. I see that so much. I see that so much as well that it's the, it's the misaligned action that we take over and over and over. Cause we think we're supposed right. to, right. Or other people said that that's how they did it. Or, you know, that's just like, th that's just how I figured out how it worked at one point. And I just kept, you know, kept doing, kept grinding and grinding and grinding. And that's where, you know, when we, when we look at our human design, or money archetypes, which we're going to link for everyone so that you can go check out yours. Um, that's where, you know, like, oh, learn again, like I said, at the top of, you know, or I said this either at the top of uh, the podcast or before we started recording, it's like giving you a permission slip to be who you are, right? You get to sink into, oh, this is me. This is how I'm meant to work. This is, I, I'm not wrong for feeling this way or having felt this way my whole life, you know, and yeah. then covering it up because that the misaligned action, the covering up who we truly are, the um, just not trusting ourselves is what leads to the stress and the burnout and all of that other, like you said, all the other, the dark side of entrepreneurship really. Um, mm -hmm. And so when we can, when we have support, and I know even for me, like you're saying, for you as a bookkeeper, for me as a financial advisor, like I need support around me as well totally. in the same way, right? And so the support that we give to others in the financial space, like I need that same, like I need to be held in that way in these other areas of life where I'm not the genius, right? Totally. I, I need my team around me too. Um yeah so that I can be safe and so that I can be, you know, keep s staying in my aligned action lane as well. Um, yeah. so it's so, again, so, so beautiful to know yourself, um, and then to start to actually move your business in that direction, move with yourself, um, rather than against yourself so much. So, yeah. Uh -huh. Michelle, I, this conversation has been amazing and we could clearly keep going. Uh, <laughs> right. So I'm so glad we have time, um, on the calendar again to talk, but for, for right now, how can people find you? Um, and then how can they take the money archetype quiz as well? Yeah. So, um, they can find me at the best place is michellebcooper.com or on every social media. It's Michelle B. Cooper. Um, so I try to make it really easy from the michellebcooper.com website. You can get to my uh, podcast. You can get to the sacred money archetypes assessment, which um, I highly recommend. And, you know, you'll have the link for everybody specifically for that. 
Um, and then you, if you, you know, if you need help with accounting bookkeeping, you can get there from there as well. It's kind of like a one stop leads to all paths kind of thing. Um, uh, I would say, um, you know, the, the, the best thing is just to start to uh, get to know people mm -hmm. that you need in your life, right? Like, I don't, I don't believe in rushing into anything, but when you feel somebody is of resonance with you, like take that action and reach out and like respond for me, respond yeah. um, to what's presented. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, 70% of the world are generators, right? So, right. You're going to respond <laughs> uh, right. if you're a projector, right? Like here's, here's your invitation to explore. Um, totally. Right. Totally. Um, I, we are open for questions um, for our manifestors out there. Like initiate yeah. what if it feels right like you can initiate that action and our reflectors totally. take some time <laughs> right take the time just you need. reflect feel it out um so yeah. i love that michelle thank you so much for being here i really really appreciate this conversation um and for everyone again look in the show notes um for those links um to connect with michelle and if any of this spurred any questions or thoughts we absolutely would love to hear from you always, always. Um, you can catch us on any of the platforms uh, that we are on as well, or you can send questions to Hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H -N -N -A at expansiveceo.com. Thanks again, Michelle. It was so- Thanks wonderful. for having me. This is awesome. Thank you. That's it for this episode. Thanks for listening and be sure to like and subscribe. And again, if anything resonated with you from this episode, I would love to hear from you. Email me at Hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H, -N -N at expansiveceo.com and tell me about it. And if you're ready for your greatest expansion, you can find ways to work with me at expansiveceo.com and at xsquaredwealthplanning.com. That's X, the numeral two, wealthplanning.com. So until next time, remember that there is enough, you are enough, and your birthright in this lifetime is to be expansive.